We're now on the fifth year since Apple ditched Intel and created their own Apple Silicon chips, starting with the M1, which was mind blowing, along with their software, which worked incredibly well. Then we had the M2, the M3. Now we have the M4 series, which is basically just destroying the competition in so many different ways, especially with this Mac mini, which I'm gonna discuss in just a minute. And we also have the M5 on the horizon, the M6. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the state of Apple Silicon in the PC market today, how it compares to the Windows PC competition in different segments from the budget laptops, budget mini PCs, all the way up to the high-end custom DIY PCs. And I'm gonna make a couple of predictions of what's gonna happen in the PC market for the next five years as a direct result of Apple Silicon. But the first thing I wanna do is talk about how crazy Apple Silicon is and how much it has allowed Apple to innovate. The first thing I really wanna get into is how Apple Silicon has allowed Apple to be insanely competitive for the first time in decades. It's allowed Apple to do things that you cannot do on any other PC or any other laptop. For example, without Apple Silicon, think about this, we would not have the Mac Studio because you can't fit all of that with an Intel PC and a dedicated GPU. You just can't make it work in the Mac Studio without having Apple Silicon. Same thing for the 24 inch iMac. Have you seen the logic board and how tiny everything is? Without Apple Silicon, it literally would not have been possible and nobody else can do it. Only Apple thanks to Apple Silicon. But the pinnacle of design that's due to Apple Silicon that nobody else can do is this right here. This is a flawless masterpiece. No one else can make this. This is the tiniest mini PC that packs this much performance. And the only way to do this is with Apple Silicon. And you can get this for as low as 500 bucks we've seen on Amazon or Costco. This right here is, in my opinion, the best PC for regular people in the world. You buy this for 500 bucks and it'll last you a decade of reliable computing, everything you need to do, business work, school work, for your aunt, your uncle, your grandma, your grandpa, they buy this, it'll last 10 years, no problem. This thing right here is disrupting so many industries, starting with the budget DIY PC industry, like Linus Tech Tips has shown that they've tried to build a PC to compete with this. They simply couldn't because this thing is that good and it's in such a small package, which is the beautiful thing about it. Think about the Hackintosh community. So many people on those forums are saying, hey guys, goodbye, I'm leaving Hackintoshes because this PC is doing it for me at only 500, 600 bucks. And yes, the storage and RAM upgrades are expensive, which sucks. That's the only downside, but it's still a killer value. And the beautiful thing is you also have the M4 Pro higher end machine, which is a little bit more expensive. Literally the world's fastest production CPU, basically matching what you have on the uh, Intel side with chips that are literally in massive desktop PCs, but you have this tiny Mac mini. And yes, the GPU isn't the best, but it's almost as good as the RTX 4060. And this thing right here is making it really, really difficult for the Windows PC market because you could just buy this and get really, really killer photo editing, video editing, web design performance with this thing for a relatively low price instead of having to build your own high-end custom PC, which yes, would be more powerful, but this is such a simple solution. You buy this and you just work and get it done. So Apple has done something truly unique with this Mac mini, and I think this is gonna be a legendary product that's gonna keep getting better and better as new Apple Silicon chips emerge. And then as far as the high end, we also have the Mac Studio, which is currently not that great because it's limited to the M2 series of chips, but here in a couple of months, we're about to see the M4 Ultra Mac Studio, and then the Mac Pro, which are gonna have insanely good CPU and GPU performance. I mean, the M4 Max GPU is also almost as fast as an RTX 4080, 
and the M4 Ultra is about to double it. Once again, I believe it's gonna be the fastest, faster than the RTX 4090, and probably comparable or a little bit slower than the RTX 5090. And then of course we have the laptop space where Apple now has pretty much the fastest laptop you can get with the M4 Max, but we also have the budget M4 powered machine like the $1,600 M4 MacBook Pro. That thing is crazy fast and it destroys the Windows competition at the same price point, but here in probably a few weeks at the end of this month or before March, we're getting the M4 MacBook Air for $1,100. And if you think about the Windows PC market and all the new chips that came out, we have Intel's Lunar Lake, we have Qualcomm's X Elite, we have the AMD HX370 AI chip that came out that's also very good. Well, the M4 MacBook Air is about to basically destroy those because when those chips were coming out, they were competing with the M3 and the M3 was winning in quite a few different areas, but the M4 takes it to a whole new level. We're gonna have 16 gigs of RAM for the same price and just killer performance across the board. With the CPU, the GPU is getting better. It's basically becoming really hard for budget Windows PCs to compete. Now, the best thing they can do is probably release some lower end machines, making it like 600 to $800 laptops, but I just checked Walmart, they have the M1 MacBook Air for $650, which is a great price. But then I looked at Amazon, $750 right now for a redesigned, fresh and new, super, super thin M2 MacBook Air. That's with eight gigs of RAM, but guess what? The 16 gig version is only $50 more, $800 for a 16 gig M2 MacBook Air. Tell me, why would you not buy that when you have reliable software, you have a killer design, great battery life. In fact, I actually believe that Apple Silicon is too good right now in its state because Apple is having issues competing with their own products because this M4 Mac mini, you buy this, and even when Apple releases the M6, the M7, the M8, you're gonna be like, hey, the M4 still does everything that I need to do and it's super fast and snappy. Why would I upgrade? Same thing with the M4 MacBook Pros. When the M5 comes out, it's gonna be really hard hard to find a reason to upgrade because yes, the M5 chip is gonna be more powerful, it might have better battery life and better features, but I mean, this does everything that most people need it to do with the M4, the M4 Pro, and the M4 Max. So Apple's probably gonna have to come out with new features to get people to upgrade, like for example, the tandem OLED display that's coming to the high-end MacBook Pro. That's what's gonna get me to upgrade because to be honest, I'm still using my 16 inch M1 Max from 2021. That MacBook Pro is still doing everything I need it to do. It's becoming a really tough sell with Apple Silicon just being so good. So here's my prediction for what's gonna happen in the PC market and what's gonna happen with Apple Silicon going into the future, let's say about five or 10 years. Well, the CEO of Arm and also of Qualcomm said that by 2029, 50% of Windows PC sales will be ARM based. And I completely agree because Intel came out with a one-off product with integrated RAM and it became too expensive and they can't afford it. So they're going back to a traditional design. I think Qualcomm's gonna kill it with their second gen, the third gen, fourth gen, fifth gen, whatever comes out, they're gonna keep getting better and better and better at good prices and it's slowly gonna take over the market, especially if AMD or Nvidia start going into the ARM-based PC laptop market, that's just going to kill it, but I think Apple Silicon is just way too far ahead to where everyone's gonna be playing catch up for years and years and years. And if Apple can come out with unique things that nobody else can do, unique features that no one else can pull off, the rest of the market will not be able to catch up to them. They'll be playing catch up for the next decade. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the state of Apple Silicon in 2025 down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.